Let's talk about popular landscape photography locations. Today I'm at Howlnaker Windmill and behind me is the tunnel that won landscape. Well the tunnel didn't win the competition but somebody this year in 2021 won landscape photographer of the year taking a picture of this tunnel behind me. I've been here many many times but I've never got a photograph of the tunnel itself that I would say do you know what that is one for the portfolio. I've got plenty of photographs of my kids here, lots of great portraits, but not a photograph of the tunnel itself that I'm happy with. I'm not coming here as a result of the competition winning itself, but I just thought I would share this location. It's not one of those secret locations anymore, is it? Everybody knows about this. So I'll give you the what three worst location of where to park. Park sensibly, it's near people's houses, and essentially it's a very short walk. But just for my own peace of mind, I did say months ago before the competition winning, I said to Pablo and Jamie, guys, we should go out this autumn and photograph the tunnel at Howlnaker. And they said, yeah, let's do that. And then somebody went on one landscape photographer of the year, and most instances, a couple of weeks, I've been I've been keeping an eye on this location on social media, and you've had to join a queue to get this photograph. It's, it's become one of those honeypot locations, hasn't it? So in terms of the colour of the leaves, that is a controversial topic. It's very easy to change the colour of the leaves from green to brown. And that's what people were doing a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. And now I'm stood here, there are some yellow leaves, there are some green leaves. This is quite a sheltered location, so the leaves are not changing colour and falling off the trees the same rate as all the woodland around it. It's one of those things you actually need to come here to see whether or not it's ready for an autumn photograph or not. I have no idea how I've got it to myself this morning, probably because it was raining all the way here, but I saw that as a bonus because I brought a polarizing filter with me and having wet leaves is going to increase the saturation and it's going to look better. So that's the reason why the rain didn't put me off this morning. Not even any dog walkers or any other photographers, just me. Look. Now this is the scene behind me, which is the composition. Look, got the whole place to myself. The sun is not going to hit this tunnel for an hour or two, so I'm going to head up the hill to the actual windmill itself. Let's go. Okay, so just in case, by the time I come back, this is a busy place, and I'm not, I'm not shy, but I'm not a massive fan of making videos in front of crowds of people. The tunnel, it's obviously got two ends. Now the winning shot was shot from the south, facing north, and the gate was in it. Now, whenever I've been here, I've actually shot the opposite direction. I've always shot to the south because I don't think that that gate is very photogenic. I just realized if I shoot that composition from the north facing south and all of the other photographers are following the same composition as the winning image, all the photographers will be in my shot. I'll be the one guy in everybody else's shot and everybody else will be in my shot. Ah. Uh, Oh no, this is creating a situation where you have to be a sheep. Or you just wait. Do you think that they'll have some sort of ticket machine where you take a number and then you get in line? Okay, you've got five minutes. Put your tripod here, please. Take your shot. Next. <laughs> wow, that is art, isn't it? That's funny. These are the thoughts I have inside my head. Howlnaker Windmill is looking beautiful. I came here quite a few years ago and they were renovating it at the time. So this had some Harris fencing around it, it had no blades on it at all. And now that it is finished, um, I don't know whether it's because it's too windy right now, but you can see that the blades or the veins, I think is what the internet tells me, the veins are attracted. So I think in order to make this a really, really special photograph, you would need all of the blades and the veins to be sticking out so that it looks like a proper windmill. As you might expect, this windmill is on the top of a hill. It's very exposed, it's very windy, um, but from a photographic perspective, you can go all the way around the windmill. There's probably 20 meters between this railing and the hedges. So you can shoot it wide, you could step further back, you could use a slightly longer lens. So other than 
doing a bit of research to see when the blades might be out. I don't know if I've got any advice other than just capture a nice sunrise or sunset. Easy location. Ah, oh, that is really interesting. So I think when I came here first time, it wasn't tiled on the outside. Um, back in the olden days, I don't know what the timeline is, but this was a rustic brick windmill. And they've more recently clad the outside of it in tile, which is, is photogenic as well, but not as nice as the old rustic brick that's actually underneath there, but it's probably less in the rain in, so I can see why they might have done that. At the moment it's winter so you've just got grass around it and most of the hedges look a bit dead. If you were to come in the summer you might get a crop in one of the fields adjacent. So providing you can find a footpath or somewhere okay to photograph it from, I'd probably go back, use a longer lens, then you'll cut out the railings. As pretty as these railings are, it doesn't exactly look very countryside does it? Right, let's do a quick quiz. Does anybody know where the term honeypot, as in honeypot locations, comes from? This is what the internet has to say. The term honeypot location comes from something or some location that is attractive or rewarding and that entices a specific group of people. This is a honeypot location to photographers. This isn't a honeypot location for non-photographers. Interesting you see, because I've been out to photographic iconic locations with my wife and family and she'll quite quickly correct me and just say Whatever, it's a tree. Uh, I don't think you understand, this is the tree. This is the lone tree that is, and you just say, yes, it's a tree. Come on, let's go, I want an ice cream. So a honeypot location to photographers is not a honeypot location to other human beings. So interesting, huh? But this is the, if any of you go out taking photographs with your family, you're probably met with the same sort of reservations about do we really need to walk this far for a lone tree? Yes, we do. Okay, so we're done at the windmill here. If you're coming back here, I'd say probably step the other side of this hedge that I'm filming from in the summertime when you've got a nice crop, something a bit interesting, some interesting foreground. Yeah, that's my advice. I'm not even going to take a photograph of this. I've taken a snap on my phone, but not today. But I'll share some of my previous photographs that I've taken of the windmill over the years. There's a brick building over here, let's go and see what that is. Not really sure what to expect in here. Kind of a, an eight-sided brick structure. I suspect that they used to keep the stones for the windmill in here. Nothing to photograph, but I just thought it was interesting to explore this place. This is turning into a bit of a vlog rather than a YouTube tutorial kind of location scouting, but I don't do enough vlogs where there's no real agenda or location, but I'm genuinely just exploring this for the first time, so I'm bringing you guys along with me. So this brick structure is literally, windmills there, structures over there. Sun is there, look, sun. That, that's the sun there. Okay, let's head down the hill now to the tree tunnel, see how many photographers have gathered there. I've never seen a photograph of this tunnel with mist in it, so uh, maybe there's an opportunity. If you want to get a unique shot of this tunnel, a lot of people are always looking for a unique take on a location. How do you make a unique image of this location? It's a tunnel, you've got north to south, you've got focal length, you've got aperture, you've got lighting conditions, you've got the seasons. How do you not get the same photograph as everybody else? If I take a cracking shot of it today, post it online, everyone's going to say, oh yeah, that's the, uh, that's the landscape photographer of the year location, isn't it? Great, like, how do you, yeah, I don't, I don't have an answer for you. I don't know how you create a unique image of this location because it is so simple. 
All right, this is it. Moments of truth. How busy is it as I go around the corner? There's literally nobody there. I've got the whole place to myself. Well, I think I'll have that then. Thank you very much. Let's set the camera up. I'm not entirely sure how I've managed to wangle this location to myself. Maybe it's already gone out of fashion. The internet has had too much of it. People have stopped photographing it a couple of weeks later. And now you got the place yourself. I don't know, it's a weekend. It's sunrise. But it's not, it's not early. What time is it now? It's quarter to nine in the morning. Spoiler alert. If you see any photographs of the Hellenacre Tunnel from this year, and it's crazy orange and red. In the scene here, 90% of the trees are green. And so this is from the northern end where the metal gate is. And I'm looking south. So this is the opposite direction to where the winning composition was taken from. We'll go that way to get back to the car anyway, but maybe that's the secret. At the northern end, I've got two trees that have a bit of color to them. One of them is orange, one of them is yellow, and the rest of the trees are green. And so this is what has caused a lot of arguments online. People, people post a really nice photograph of this in a landscape photography group and people would say, hey, can you confirm, are the leaves actually like this or is this all Photoshop work? And people were kind of dodging the question, well, I took multiple exposures to really get the best out of the colour. Answer the question, what colour? If you take multiple images and enhance green, it will be more green. It won't be more orange or yellow. So I think if you do this, it's absolutely fine. I edit my images to have slightly better colour. It's fine. I think you should just declare it though. Just say, oh yeah, I've, I've definitely tampered with the original RAW file. Uh, I cloned this person out, I added this person in, whatever it is. Just be straightforward, because you will get found out. In terms of the photography today, I'm shooting with my 5D Mark III because I'm shooting this with my EOS R with the my latest purchase, the Canon RF 16mm f2.8. This entire video is shot on that, kind of just experimenting with that. I've got the 70 to 200 and I've got a polarizer on the front which is going to cut through all of the glare. So it was raining this morning before I got here and you can't replicate the effects of a polarizer using Photoshop. So I use a polarizer and then that just saturates all of the colors. Okay, the sun is most definitely out. I've been taking a few photographs some with people, some without. My thinking when people walk into frame is ideally I just have one person and their dog. Compositions tend to look better with odd numbers so if I can have one person with their dog, great. Or three people, two people just seem to look a bit uncomfortable sometimes. It's just my opinion. Okay so I'm going to take a few shots and then we're going to head down to the southern end of the tunnel which is where the composition is taken from. So I've come down the hill, I'm at the southern end of the tunnel now and this is the, the view that made it into the, well, the one, the landscape photographer of the year. I've not really investigated exactly where she stood but at the moment I'm using a 70 to 200 and I am shooting at 150 millimeters. So you need to be bringing a long lens with you and the reason being is you can see this big tree here. Ideally what you want is your composition to be in there. If you don't have a long lens, then this tree will end up being in your frame. There are a few reasons why you want to use a long lens here. First of all, you're going to crop out this big heavy looking tree here because your scene is kind of happening here. Secondly, uh, it's going to create lots of compression, so it's going to make all of the trees and the leaves in the tunnel look a lot more dense. And then finally, you can cut out the sky because when you do a lot of woodland photography, the brightest part of the image is what would draw the viewer's eye and that would be the sky. And that is not the interesting part of this. You want to contain their attention in the middle of the frame. So what you want to do is you need to be cropping in to this tunnel here. And therefore, you either use a long lens or you go right in the middle of the tunnel and use a slightly wider lens. But 
using a wider lens is going to have less impact because it's going to push the perspective so this 200 may not be long enough ideally i would go further back that way and i would have brought my 100 to 400 so if you got it bring a 100 to 400. Okay, so here is my take on popular photographic locations. People might say, oh, I can't be bothered to photograph the West Pier, it's been done. But if you don't have a good photograph of the West Pier in your portfolio, you might think, well, I want a good photograph of the West Pier and I've never been there, so I want to experience that location. So don't be put off visiting and photographing locations just because they're popular. You should come to this tunnel. You should go up the hill and see how like a windmill. There's no harm in that. And if you don't feel like you want to be a sheep, then don't post the images online. But you should come and experience these things. So this video is not about me having a rant saying, oh look, all the photographers, they're coming here, they're all doing the same thing. I have not achieved anything today. I don't have a unique image of this place. My photographs that I took today probably aren't even as good as everybody else's that come here because I distract myself making these videos. The point of this video was one, for me to get out of the house. And secondly, if you're thinking of coming to this location, hopefully now you know your way around a bit better. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.